If we have a dollar crisis, gold is going to rise to replace the dollar as the primary international reserve asset. Not a currency, gold is true money. Everything else is a money substitute. When most people think of investing, they probably think of buying shares of companies on the stock market. In fact, investing in the stock market has helped countless people accumulate wealth over the years. However, savvy investors know that the stock market is a battle between bears and bulls, a battle in which prices fluctuate widely, creating risks. To balance this risk, the most successful investors look to safe havens like a reliable store of value. One of the most common ways to hedge against stock market risk is to invest in precious metals, with the most popular investments being silver and gold. Gold and silver are two popular investments for those looking for assets that can be both a store of value and a hedge against inflation. These precious metals are well regarded and have a long history, but they offer different types of benefits and security and investors should be aware of how they are likely to perform in various economic climates before deciding to invest in one of them. In today's video, we will share why Peter Schiff believe gold and silver are best assets to grow your wealth. But before we get into the video, make sure you subscribe to our channel and press that bell icon to never miss an update. If you look at the bond market, you can see a 30-year US Treasury note pay 3%. Today, inflation is 9%. Why would anyone lend money to the US government for 30 years at 3%? You have to believe that this 9% inflation is going to go away real quick and that the average inflation rate over the next 30 years is going to be maybe 2%, which means there's a 1% return. It is clear that the bond market is convinced that inflation will disappear. The gold market is making the same mistake. Gold traders are looking at the Fed's commitment to fight inflation and they think they have to decide they're going to do it. They're going to get rid of inflation and they're going to do it with a high interest rate, which is going to be a headwind for gold. And if gold is an inflation hedge and there's no inflation to hedge because the Fed has promised to get rid of it, that's what's keeping the price of gold down. It is a bluff that the Fed cannot fight inflation due to the severity of rate hikes it would indeed be necessary, because what they have done so far is totally insufficient. The kind of monetary policy that would actually be necessary to eliminate inflation will never happen. And of course, we will never get rid of inflation without the cooperation of the government. The government must drastically reduce public spending, and this will never happen. They will continue to increase public spending. So when the markets realize that this is all a ruse, that inflation is not going to go away, that it is here to stay, and it will be much more than 2%, maybe even double digits. The bond market will implode and the gold market will explode. Bond prices will crash and gold will skyrocket. Everything the Fed said was wrong. Every forecast it made was wrong, but they still have credibility. There is no doubt that if we have a dollar crisis, gold will rise to replace the dollar as the main international reserve asset, not as a currency. Gold is real money, everything else is a substitute for money. And the difference between legitimate currencies and fiat currencies, legitimate currencies are backed by gold, fiat currencies are not. They don't lean on anything. The world is returning to a gold standard for many different reasons. And the beauty of the technology we have today is that people can also follow a gold standard in private. Governments do not need to do that. In fact, perhaps the free market will return to the gold standard before governments because it is so easy to have gold stored in a trust deposit. And the owner of that deposit can issue digital tokens that are on a blockchain and backed by that gold. Each token can be one gram of gold and these tokens can be traded easily. They could be used as a medium of exchange, as a unit of account, as a store of value. Therefore, people can easily and cheaply transact and save gold and silver with counterparties all over the world, very simply and easier than ever before. So the technology we have today makes the gold standard much more practical than it was in the past. And it worked great in the past, so it'll work even better in the future. The problem is, is that we have had cheap money for so long. The bubble is so big, we have made so many mistakes, so many misallocations of resources and misinvestments. There are many things to unravel. Many companies that should never have been created have to go bankrupt. 
Many jobs that should never have been created must be lost. The workers are poorly distributed. They do not do the right thing. We don't do enough things because so many of our people are employed doing bad things. They are in companies that only exist because of 0% interest rates or quantitative easing. Meanwhile, we're not doing the things we're supposed to be doing and we're going into debt to buy the things that we're not doing because of these misallocations in the economy. People have not saved enough. They double too much. All of these patterns must and will change if the Federal Reserve allows interest rates to return to a free market level. But when it happens again, bankruptcies, defaults, losses, everyone will have to cut spending, including the U.S. government. One of the things the Fed has been funding is massive growth in government spending. So if the Fed backs down to fight the inflation it created, it will force the government to slash government spending. But they don't at the moment. They continue to increase public spending. We are not doing what we should to fight inflation. Now, what the Fed is doing will allow some of the air to get out of the bubble. So we are already in a recession. The recession will get worse. Unemployment will go up. The Fed will capitulate in its war against inflation and wage a new war against recession and financial crisis. And that means inflation will win. The problem is, is that when the Fed tries to stimulate the economy, when inflation is already well above 2%, and is sending inflation into double digits, the markets are no longer going to trust the Fed. When the balance sheet blows above 9 trillion, then 10 trillion, and to infinity and beyond, the markets will no longer believe anything the Fed says about its determination and commitment. Inflation is going to be considered here to stay, and it is going to be very high. And that is going to change the rules of the game because the dollar is going to go down. Long-term interest rates will skyrocket and the price of gold and silver will explode. The demand for gold and silver comes from different sources, with gold being primarily an investment asset and silver being an industrial asset. Therefore, the price of gold changes as investors assess their own investment needs, how much security they want, and the return expectations of other asset classes, such as stocks and bonds. Gold's relatively high price per ounce makes it easier for investors to store value compared to silver, making it cheaper to store an equivalent dollar amount of value. As for silver, demand is more driven by industrial applications such as electronics and solar cells, so in times of economic stability and general growth, it performs better. Therefore, depending on your specific situation, you may decide to go for silver or gold taking into account the respective characteristics of each and the economic climate at the time of making your decision. Investors thinking of investing in gold or silver should carefully consider whether it really makes sense for them. This may make sense in the short term or when there are specific imbalances in the respective precious metal markets. Silver and gold can function as safe havens, but gold tends to do better over longer periods. That said, on shorter timeframes, the specific dynamics of each market end up being more important to their respective returns. That's all for today. Let us know your views in the comments section below, and don't forget to like this video before leaving. Thanks for watching.